And so what we do, what's done in practice is we, what we do is we want to minimize the uh, the sum of the squares of the error. Okay, so uh, the and it turns out that statistically the maximum likelihood um, of fitting the data that minimizes the error okay and the, this this term the maximum likelihood is a st statistical term which means it's the the best the best fit okay the maximum likelihood of, of fitting the data is to minimize the sum of the squares to minimize the sum of the squares, the squared error. Okay, and what that looks like is basically if we want to minimize the sum of EI squared. Okay, and turns out that we can find these this uh, maximum, the maximum. I mean the, the minimum error by taking the derivative of this and setting it equal to zero. The problem is is the expression that we have for EI, you'll recall EI is the sum of Y minus Y minus A naught minus A one XI YI. Well, it turns out if we take the derivative, we have to take the derivative here with respect to these a values. These are our unknowns because we know uh, x of i and y i. And if we take the derivative, we actually can't take the derivative with, that, with respect to two different variables. We take the normal derivative, and so what we really need to do is take the partial derivative with respect to a naught of um, of e i squared and we need to take the partial derivative with respect to a1 of ei squared. Okay, the reason that we're doing this is so that later on we can set this partial derivative equal to zero and by setting the partial with respect to each variable equal to zero um, it, we can find the uh, local extrema, the local minimum. And so here um, what we do is we uh, we the take the partial derivative with respect to a naught and a one and set equal to zero. Okay, to find the minimum error. Okay, so when we take the partial derivative, we actually have this ei squared term, and if it's squared, all we have to do is we have this ei squared, and this will be um, the right half would also be squared, and so uh, what we would get is when we take the partial, we um, will bring this uh, two down, and we use the chain rule, and so we'll have. Um, the partial with respect to EI squared is the same as the partial um, with respect to A naught of the sum of YI minus A naught minus A one XI okay, squared and that equals um, 2 times the sum of YI minus A naught minus a1 xi. Okay, when we take this, what we do is we we bring this down and, and then we use the chain rule and take the derivative of what's inside. And since we're taking the partial with respect to a naught and it's um, just a constant and then it'll just be multiplied by one. So really this is times one. Uh, we can do the same thing over here um, but instead we're taking it with respect to a1, the partial with respect to a1. And all that means is we just take the partial derivative, um, we bring the, the root down again, and we get 2 times the sum 
of yi minus a naught minus a1 xi. And this time, since we have this xi term, we take the partial with respect to a naught. That gives us xi out here. Okay? So these are the two expressions that we're going to use. Uh, so we got two expressions here. We have this expression and this expression. And so the next step is really to take these expressions and set them equal to zero. And we do that, we get two times the sum of yi minus a naught minus a1 times xi equal to zero. And we get two times the sum of yi minus a naught minus a1 x of i times x of i equal to zero. Okay? And we can divide both sides by two to get rid of that. Of course, zero over two is two, so that just gives us these two expressions. That's the sum of this, this term and the sum of that term times x of i. Okay? And so uh, when we set these equal to zero, uh, we can rearrange these terms and we get uh, two additional equations and these equations become uh, the sum of yi minus the sum of a naught minus the sum of a1 xi and here we get the sum of yi xi minus the sum minus the sum of a naught <coughs> xi minus the sum of a1 xi squared. Okay? And these are both uh, equal to zero. And so at this point, because we've taken linear algebra, uh, you guys should think, um, oh, what is this? It, we have, you know, two equations and two unknowns. Okay? And we can rearrange this so that it's easier to see these two equations and two unknowns so that we get on the right hand side we can get our yi's and then on the left hand side we can get our our a terms. Okay, um, If we look at this term here the sum of a naught basically that's going to basic that's going to basically be a naught plus a naught plus a naught dot 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 because a naught doesn't change and this is from i equal one to n so we can actually just rewrite that as n times a naught. Okay, that's what that term becomes. So uh, the first equation then becomes n, this is the number of data points, times a naught plus the sum of x of i <coughs> times a1 is equal to the sum of y sub i. That's the first term, that's this term rewritten and we can do the same thing for the second term and we get the sum of x of i times a naught plus the sum of x of i squared times a1 and that's equal to the sum of y sub i x of i. Okay, that's our two equations and two unknowns. And again, the reason that we're doing this, right, is because we took the uh, derivatives with respect to each one and we set them equal to zero so we can find the a naught and a one that make the uh, sum of the squared error the smallest. Okay, and so this is what we get and it turns out that if we get two equations and two unknowns and we can solve that, right? As long as the number of equations and the number of unknowns equal each other, we can solve that. So we can actually rewrite this in terms of a1 and a0. We can say that a1 is equal to n times the sum of xi yi minus 
the sum of xi times the sum of yi over n times the sum of xi squared minus the sum of xi squared. Okay? And then we say a naught is equal to y bar minus a1 x bar. Okay? We haven't used those terms before, so uh, y bar is just equal to the mean of y or the sum of yi over n and similarly x bar is equal to the sum of x i over n. Okay. So those are the ways this that's the way that we can find this. And this is this has been our goal. So if you see here we get our a naught, our a one and our a naught. And if we plug that back into the equation, that means that the um the solution that we get uh for this set of data is we just figured out the way to get the a naught and the a one such that if we write an equation that says y is equal to a naught plus a one x it's going to give us the line that minimizes that's the maximum likelihood line that minimizes the error okay so um, that's where it comes from. Basically, uh, we get an expression for a line, and we get an expression for the error, and then take the derivative of the square of the error and set it equal to zero. And then we solve for a naught and a one, and that gives us the best fit or the maximum likelihood solution.